In today's video, we will be going over all of the guitars that John Mayer was using for the solo tour. I'll be using this magazine, the Guitar Magazine Japan March issue that I have in hand. They did an amazing job interviewing Jeremy, John's guitar tech, and taking photos and just getting a lot of information around all the different guitars that John was using. I've scanned all the pages for you guys and translated the Japanese to English. So I'll be using this as our main basis to kind of review all of the different guitars and just highlight some really incredible images of them for you all. This magazine will be linked in the description down below. I highly encourage you guys to check it out. It's amazing and just kind of a piece of John Mayer's gear history from this magazine as we normally never get any sort of rig review from John. The last one we got was during the Battle Studies era. So I highly encourage you guys to check out this magazine and give the video a like for me scanning everything translating everything for you guys I'm gonna do my best to review all of the guitars with this information in the magazine There is some necessary filling in the gaps from the translation from Japanese to English So I've done my best to kind of fill everything in so that we can cover everything as best as we possibly can So let's dive into all of the guitars that John used during the solo tour so for the Silver Sky, it does have a bit of an intro blurb discussing the history and development of the guitar with John and PRS. We're going to just skip over that and go right into the specifications of John's Silver Skies that they do mention in this magazine article. It mentions that they're alder body and maple neck, and the neck shape is the 635JM. Then they have the 635JMR for the rosewood fingerboard, and a 7 and a quarter inch vintage style radius, all specifications that we know the Silver Sky just has. They also mention that they have the 635JM pickups and at the time of shooting the trim springs in the back had four of them with the center ones removed for the silver skies so in case you're wondering what john does for the springs in the silver skies there you have it the two outermost springs are in center one is removed they mention and i kind of think it's funny they mentioned however it seems that john owns a large number of silver skies yeah i'm sure he does have a large number of silver skies but the individual in the photo that appeared at this time had a prototype sticker under the bridge this one is a new color called faded black that was just released in january of this year yes just the prototype version of the faded black t7 that we've seen john using all the way since the sob rock kind of promotional shows the palladium show being the first time we actually saw the faded black t7 prototype silver sky ever used live by John and they mentioned as well that of the two of the guitars that John was using the um, the magazine does also touch on the fact that you can see all of the pick wear right above the pick guard it's an area that we know John to put a lot of wear into guitars and in the shot here you can see all of those scratches just kind of cool to see the guitar slowly age over time as John keeps using it. They then go to touch on the mock sand satin silver sky as well and it says that the specs are the same as the main one that John was using the faded black t-satin just except for the finish and that it also does have a trim arm inserted into the silver sky and according to Jeremy John during the solo performances would just choose what guitar he wants to use that he's feeling at that time so he's probably on standby with equipment that can respond to John's various ideas so rough translation there is, is that John kind of picks what guitar he wants to use in the moment and it might not be necessarily predetermined what guitar he actually wants to use. That kind of makes sense too as we've seen the black one come out for gravity, especially quite a lot during the European leg of the solo tour in 2024. John was using that guitar quite a bit. So I think it's just kind of depending on his mood at the time if he wants to use the Mock Sand Satin Silver Sky, the Faded Black T Satin Silver Sky, the black one, Kind of depends on his mood for what guitar he actually wants to use. Probably the same thing, more or less, when it comes to the acoustics as well. All right, so with the Silver Skies discussed, we can now move on to all the different acoustics that we see John using on the solo tour here. The magazine mentions that John brought a total of 12 acoustic guitars to the Blue Note Tokyo performances, and that it changed pretty much with every song. And if you've seen John on the solo tour, you'll know that while the set list, they follow a rough structure, John is constantly changing up songs, especially with different requests from the fans and the crowd. And you see different guitars being used for some different songs as well which makes things a little bit interesting the magazine does touch on that a little bit as well the different set lists and usage of different guitars but the very first guitar we have is the martin om 28 jm if you're familiar with any of john's acoustic guitars this one is probably the one that you have the most familiarity with and i've seen him perform with the most so it gets into the details here. The OM28 Jam appeared in 2003 as the first installment of a John Mayer signature. It is a model based on the OM28 whose body size is the same as a triple zero and the scale is 645.2 millimeters, which is the same or similar to a dreadnought. 
Two models of the OM28 JM are brought with this guitar, and that's the next guitar that you actually see in the photos as well. But this one is specifically a famous individual as it's John's favorite, which is characterized by the peeling of the paint near the pickguard. The serial number written in the label is number 83, and that when they watched it, he performed neon with it, and it's very often used for neon live if you watch videos on the internet. So yeah, serial number 83 of the OM28 JM, just John's main acoustic guitar. This is a very special acoustic guitar, and you know number 83 because of that the wear next to kind of the pick guard there and the bridge of this acoustic guitar. This is just a very special acoustic guitar. And of course, number 83 being very special in terms of a number to John Mayer, you have the Two Rock Custom Reverb signature number 83 as well. 83 is just, that's just John's number. The top material is Engelmann spruce and the side and back material is East Indian rosewood. The neck material is mahogany and the fingerboard material is ebony with John's signature written on the back. And it mentions as well for the 12th frets, it has a triangular shaped inlay. And it's mentioned that this triangular design was inspired by the pilot watch. I forget off the top of my head, which watch was actually inspired by this. If you remember, leave it in the comments down below, but just a little bit of interesting details and some specs on the OM28JM. They then go into mention the second OM28JM, which is numbered four, that they say that this one was in the rack, just used as primarily a backup on standby for Neon. They assume as well it was probably in drop C, and they say that the serial number is probably number 48. So I guess they don't exactly know what it was, or they're trying to read the writing perhaps, but the translation here is a serial number is probably number 48. And it is unknown whether this is a just substitute instrument for a different tuning or used as just another one in a regular tuning, but John seems to have carried these two with him during the North American Solo Tour in 2023 as well, which we do know that he did. Our next two guitars are a pair of OMJM John Mayer Signature Martins. John did use one of the 20th anniversary gray silver burst finished ones during the solo tour, but for the Blue Note Tokyo shows, we just have two natural finished ones. The magazine goes to mention that the OMJM is the second signature model with John and Martin. The basic specifications, such as the composition of the wood, are the same as the OM28JM, but the design of the details is different, such as the position markings of the inlays on the head and the presence or absence of bridge binding. Little details like that the magazine does go into mentioning, and that two of them were prepared together with the one in in the preceding paragraphs so of the fifth guitar and then the sixth in this magazine article here are both OMJMs and that they say it was used for songs like Who Said and it's difficult to determine which one John was using but he had two of the OMJMs there with him on tour which is pretty cool to see him having a probably assuming a main OMJM and then a backup much like the OM28JMs as well. Our next guitar is the OM45 John Mayer 20th Anniversary Signature Edition. The magazine just touches on just the essential details that we know of the 20th Anniversary OM45, how the OM28 JM was first released in 2003. So to celebrate 20 years of John Mayer and Martin's partnership for 2023, they released two different anniversary models, the OM JM and then the OM45. In addition to the, essentially the main detail is a new color that Martin released called the Platinum Gray Burst. The OM45 has Guatemalan roll Rosewood on the sides and back, and then it just touches on the fact that this is a very luxurious model, is what the magazine says, or at least in the translation, specifically pointing to all the different inlays that are around the body, the sound hole, the inlays on the fingerboard, and then on the headstock as well. It mentions just how beautiful, essentially, these inlays are on this guitar. Moving on now, we have a Martin Custom Shop OM00014 fret flame coax cutaway. Man, it's nice to just have flat out confirmation with the actual guitar that John is using that this is exactly what this is. This is what we 99.9% .9 theorize that this guitar was, but now we have dead on confirmation that that's exactly what this guitar is. And it mentions, this is one made by the Martin Custom Shop. It is a show model announced at the NAMM show in 2022. Two is the only model with a cutaway in this lineup that John was using, but it has a high percentage of live use for songs like Shot in the Dark, Slow Dancing in the Burning Room, and The Age of Worry. And it's a guitar that has been quite popular on the solo tour. This is just an absolute dream guitar. I've always wanted a guitar with koa in the wood. Hawaii's been a very special place to me and my family. So to have a guitar with Hawaiian wood, I think would be really cool. And a cutaway guitar as well for an acoustic, I think it's just just makes it a little bit more fun, a little bit easier to transition to when it comes to playing acoustic guitars. This is a guitar I just would love to have, and this is probably my favorite acoustic of all the ones that John has been using, personally at least. 
Moving on now to the D45 John Mayer signature. The magazine just touches on, again, just some basic details of the D45, how it was released in 2018 NAM as a limited edition product, John Mayer's signature version of the D45, and the third John Mayer signature guitar that was released with John and Martin. Engelman spruce is used for the body's top material with Guatemalan rosewood for the sides and back material. And then it mentions how the inlays go around the sound hole and then onto the fingerboard as well, much like the OM45, which is just a really Really cool look for some of these acoustic guitars. Just another great shot of John's guitars. This is honestly my favorite part about the magazine is all these really high quality images of John's gear that we now have. It's just, it's really awesome. Moving on to guitar number 10, a Martin D12-28, a 12 string guitar. And first things first, it's got a plug in the sand hole. The translation says to prevent howling, but I'm just assuming extra resonating and feedback just to help reduce that. And it notes that this guitar was not used in the set that John performed, but it has been used during the North American part of the solo tour. And it also goes back to mentioning the 2008 Glastonbury Festival where John actually performs My Sweet Lord, a George Harrison cover, and John actually uses this specific guitar in it. So it states that it's a guitar that John has had for clearly a very long time. And that's actually a performance that I didn't quite remember, so I had to go back and watch it, and pretty cool to see John using this guitar all the way back in 2008, and it's still being brought out on tour with him now, 2023 and 2024. Guitar number 11 is the National 12 String Resonator. The main detail here that the magazine mentions is that it seems to be a custom made resonator. So I'm assuming a custom made resonator for John, which is pretty cool. This guitar is most famously used on the solo tour and just in general for Walt Grace's submarine test January of 1967. It's really cool. And they also just touch on the fact that when they picked it up, it was extremely heavy and weighed more than five kilograms, they assume. So that's pretty cool to know as well, just exactly how heavy these resonators are. Up next, we have the limited edition Mini Martin size five parlor guitar. This mini acoustic guitar was manufactured from 1999 to 2009. The body width is about 285 millimeters and it's just a general model. And the impression is it is about two to three times smaller than the D28. And when you see someone holding it like John, who is a large person, it looks like a toy, but they said the sound is really good. And it was the last in the first days for, in terms of the set list for the guitars that we used. Most commonly see this guitar being used for free falling just in general during the solo tour. But this is a really cool little parlor guitar, which I just think, yeah, in John's hands is he's a bigger person. It does look incredibly tiny, but yeah, you hear him play it and it just sounds absolutely incredible. Cool just to have, again, confirmation on this guitar as well, exactly what it is. Our second last acoustic guitar is a 0012-35. It is a 12 string acoustic guitar that John picks up fairly frequently in solo performances. And there are many mysteries about the details of this instrument that it seems to be custom made or at least not a general model from Martin, but to them it looks like a 0012, so 00 size with a 12 fret joint and it's combined with the features of a D35. The 12 string specifications of the headstock is rather impressive and according to Martin's officials, it is the view that that it is a custom product from the 70s. And in addition, according to various literature on vintage Martin guitars, there was only one model called a 0012-35 produced in 1973. So because there is a record that a single instrument was produced, there is a possibility that this guitar is a one of one to see John using, which is really cool. This is a detail that at least I was not aware of when it came to John's acoustic guitars, that this one is a 70s, it appears to be at least a 1973 one-off Martin guitar. Knowing John, I'm sure he's got just a bunch of really amazing acoustic guitars that maybe we haven't even seen. I'm not sure if this is a guitar that John owns or if it's on loan from Martin. They just kind of let him use whatever he wants whenever he goes out on tour, but if he actually owns it or if it's property of Martin. But really cool, a very unique guitar in John's acoustic collection, that is for sure. And they mentioned that during at least the Blue Note Tokyo performance, it was used for Last Train Home, the opener on the first day. Our final acoustic guitar is easily the craziest out of all of these, the Martin Grand J Double Neck. And the magazine mentions that it's a double neck acoustic guitar that's attracted a lot of attention because it was used a lot during the solo tour. And it does state that it is a guitar from NAMM 2010 as a one-off that was exhibited during the show, that it has 12 strings on the right side, six strings on the lower left side, and then just has a lot of very luxurious custom shop appointments to the guitar. Now, I've mentioned before on the channel that it is actually a one of two. I don't have 
100% concrete information on this, but there are reports out there that Martin does have a second one of these Grand Jade double necks. But either way, whether it's a one of one or one of two, that's pretty insane. And hopefully John gets to keep touring with it in future tours, records with it as well. I'm sure Martin would let him, you know, use it whatever capacity that he wants. But this is a really cool Martin. I think this really is the, the, the guitar of the solo tour in my opinion. The magazine then also mentions that it's possible to split the outputs of both necks on this double neck Martin guitar. So you can actually have the 12 string neck going through a completely separate signal chain and the six string neck going through another signal chain. And that's exactly what was done for John's acoustic pedal board, which I've covered on the channel in a separate video. So if you're curious as to the details and how John actually split up various effects for the double neck Martin, go check out that video after you're done watching this one. It was used for songs like Friend of the Devil, If I Ever Get Around to Living. And they just mentioned how during the performance performance it was looped with the 12 and 6 string going on and just was a really rich performance in terms of the sound yeah I think this guitar is just incredibly special for sure without a doubt the acoustic guitar of the solo tour this is the guitar that everyone's going to remember and talk about for years to come when it comes to the solo tour that'll be I think really for a lot of people the very first guitar you think of when it comes to this tour and there you guys go, that's all 14 guitars that John was using for the Blue Note Tokyo performances and the main guitars of the solo tour. I just thought it was really worth touching on the different guitars, especially just showing you guys all the different images of these guitars because they're absolutely incredible and it's very special to have such great shots of all of John's guitars, especially from the solo tour. The details in the magazine were very brief, mainly kind of specification heavy, but the magazine would be a million pages long if they went into just so much detail on every single guitar but I wanted to just do some translating kind of share with you guys what actually was in the magazine but some really cool pieces of detailing especially when it comes to that 0012-35 the the one from 1973 that might be a one-off that's really cool and I might have to do some more deep diving into that guitar because now I'm curious as to some of the details on that one there. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and check out all the different videos I've done just discussing the details that we learned from the Guitar and Magazine Japan and a massive shout out to these guys again for just getting all this information, interviewing Jeremy, getting firsthand experience with John's rig from the solo tour. Really, really special. The description will have the link to this uh, magazine, so please go and check it out if you feel so inclined. And until the next video, guys, thank you so much for watching. Oh, last video I'm doing about the details from this magazine and the solo tour, probably the last one I'll do on the solo tour, to be honest, is talking about the JHS pedals box it later. That was a custom one-off pedal made for John that might not be one-off anymore. And we'll discuss all those details in that video. So stay tuned for that one as well. Appreciate you guys watching, especially if you made it to the end of the video. Take care and I'll see you on the next one.